David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about static C2301. Got an equivalent force couple system problem here. And we've got a plate O, A, B, C, D acted upon by three forces and one couple moment as shown. Got five kips, ten kips, eight kips of force, straight line force, and then I have this couple moment acting at C of 30 foot kips. You see the dimensions of the plate there, 5 and 10. And the first question wants to know, what's the resultant force acting on plate OABCD? Well, that just means summing up all the forces. And if I look at the X forces first, some of the forces in the X direction, I've only got one. And that is, let's say positive is to the I want to express this in Cartesian form, so I want to make a positive or an assumption consistent with that. And that's this negative 8 kips here. So I would write that as negative 8i. Some of the forces in the, X, in the y direction, there are three of them. Positive is going to be up. Starting over here in the left-hand side, I've got positive 5. I'm sorry, there's only two of them. Positive 5, positive 10, makes a positive 15. That is a J in Cartesian form. So I would say the, the FR, the resultant force, is just negative 8I plus 15J. The units are kips. Question number two, replace the given system of forces and couples with the equivalent couple at point O. So I can look at my equation sheet once again. That just means what's the resultant moment on the plate. That's just the sum of the moments about point O. And i got to look at it as I'm acting at point O. So it's the sum of the moments about point O. Once again, I'm going to assume... Uh, Counterclockwise is positive. And start over here on the left side. The 5 kips creates no moment because it intersects it, so it's like 5 times 0. Then I have this couple acting up here at point C, this 30 foot kips. It's acting clockwise, so it's a negative 30. I look at the top, and I've got this 8 kips <clears throat> acting at a distance of 5 feet trying to rotate hope you can see counterclockwise so it's plus 8 kips which is an X force Y distance of 5 and then finally I've got this 10 kips right here trying to rotate clockwise I mean excuse me counterclockwise also about point oh. so it's plus 8 I mean plus 10 times 10 do the math, and I've got 0 minus 30 plus 40 plus 10 plus 100, excuse me, is equal to positive 110. My units are kip feet. The positive means counterclockwise, so it would rotate like that. That's the answer there. Okay, pretty easy stuff. Now let's look at part three. And you've got to read it carefully. Replace the given system of forces and couples. So I could really write this. Let me write this at point O. What I've got is the force and the couple. So I've got 15 up. Positive 15 kips. And I've got negative so it's to the left, 8 kips in the x direction, negative x direction. It gives me really a resultant force that looks like this. Its magnitude is the square root of the sum of the squares. R is equal to, turns out to be 17 kips. Now I've also got to replace all these forces. I'm really like wiping out all three forces and the moment 
and I'm replacing it with a moment that I figured in part two of 110 counterclockwise. So that's, this is FR really, M C at O, 110 kip feet. So those two forces, the force and the moment, are an equivalent force couple system, and they replace all of those three forces, straight line and one, the one moment, couple moment. Now in part three, I want to get rid of the moment, really. Replace the given system of forces and couples with an equivalent force couple system, which consists simply of the resultant force. And then where does it act alongside OA, this bottom side, which is really the x-axis, OA. So, there's two ways of looking at this. One's easy, one's harder. Let's look at O. Put those same forces here. 15 up, 8 to the left. And that moment... And I want to know where, if I move it along line OA, can I get rid of the moment of 110? So what I'm really doing is just taking that, that result at that 17 at that certain angle, which we'll figure here in a second. I'm moving it over here to some, some unknown distance, but it's still that same force of 15 up, 8 to the left. And what I want to know is what's that distance in the X along that line OA. So if I call that X, here's the geometry. And I want this force, this FR, to create the same 110 kip foot moment. And so if I take moments of this new force, the newly relocated force, about point O, I eliminate the eight kips because it intersects point O. So it goes away from my calculation. All I've got to consider is the Y part, the 15 kips. And so the moment, I'm really using the formula M is equal to FD. And I'm rearranging it, and D is really this X distance. F is the force that's creating moment, which is 15, the moment's 110, so I rearrange it and I say D, which is equal to X, is equal to M over F, and that is just 110 over 15. That works out to be 7.33 feet to the right of OA, of O. So that's the real easy way to do it. There is a harder way, which we might as well explore. Still got that same force here. 15 and 8 and 17 total. Well, and I got that moment. 110. What I want to do is once again move this thing move this force, what I'm really doing is just moving it parallel, I mean perpendicular to it by some distance. So I want to move it over here to some point here and it's going to be acting like that. And what I want to do, there is some point, what I'm doing is moving it perpendicular to its line of action. So I'm moving it along a line like this and that line is perpendicular to the new moved resultant. And I can figure that distance to create the same 110 moment. I use M is equal to FD again. And I have <coughs> this distance D, let's call it, because it's that more perpendicular distance that we're used to calling D. D is equal to M over F. In this case, the moment's still 110, but the force is the 17, the resultant. So that works out to be 6.47 feet. 
So D is equal to 6.47 if I move it perfectly perpendicular to the resultant force. Then now, I need to really know what this angle here is theta between the resultant and the x-axis. Okay, I can get that from the geometry of my forces. I've got 15 up, so I've got a triangle that looks like this. It's 15 tall, and it's 8 on the adjacent side, and that's the angle I want, theta. So theta from this is equal to, the 15 is opposite, 8 is the adjacent, so that's the tangent. So it's the tangent inverse of 15 over 8. And that works out to be 61.93 degrees. Now... I want to apply that, if that angle is theta, is 61, that angle is the same angle, theta. So now I have a right triangle here, formed by this perpendicular angle right here, the 90 degree angle, and I can use trig again to solve for this distance here, that same distance I want, x. Okay, on this right triangle, X is the hypotenuse, D is the opposite side, so opposite over hypotenuse is sine, so opposite over hypotenuse is D, which is 6.47, over the number I want, x, the hypotenuse, and that's the sine of that angle, 61.93 degrees. And so I can just rearrange and I can say that x is equal to 6.47 divided by the sine of 61.93, and I get magically that same number, 7.33 feet right of O. Once again, like many of these statics problems, you can verify them by solving them in a different way.